Ladies and gents, we are back with game number two of Team Empire vs Double Dimension. It's going to be the Enchantress, the Undying Ban for the first bans. The Bane being taken out now as well. Team Empire did win the first game. Um, started to look really great with the team fights towards the end of the game. The TA just was completely unstoppable. As FN just ran amok with the hero in that late game. Um, picking up all the kills. Didn't even really need to be there for the kills as well. Picking up the kills with the traps. So, it's going to be game number two. Double Dimension needs to win this to push it to a third game because the winner goes through to the group finals while the loser drops down to the lower brackets to play up against M19. So the third band comes out, it's going to be the Winter Wyvern, so Team Empire had first pick, but don't want to be given that two double dimensions, they've got a guess they've got a, a different first pick in mind. Ten seconds remaining. Again, we, we've seen the Night Stalker being picked up first pick, the Spirit Breakers got through a couple of times. Clockwork is the Shadow Demon still there if that's something that Empire want to pick up this time instead of um, Double Dimension. So Empire, what are they thinking of? They picked themselves the first pick Spirit Breaker. Maybe you just stop Double Dimension for going for that Nature's Prophet that is still in the draft if that's something they were leaning towards. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Radiant team pick. So, DD. <laughs> Instantly pick up the counter with the Disruptor. It's going to be the Sand King coming off for double damage as well. Goes great with the Disruptor. You throw down the Kinetic Field, the Static Storm, and you've got a Blender that you can throw the Sand King in to do so much damage with that sand stance. <laughs> Sandstorm and Epicenter with the Borrow Strike as well. Five seconds remaining. Radiant team so, Empire. Picking up the Beastmaster now, one of the stronger push heroes in the game. Got a little bit of a boost with 7.07. .07. The Boars, the Hawks, and now the Neutrals. Can build up a nice little army on the Beastmaster. Uh, and just look for the push. Team Empire's turn so, Didi did ban the Viper. I wouldn't be surprised to see Empire ban something like the the Sven, those cleave heavy heroes, um, specifically the Sven. Just because it's great against the Beastmaster, you cleave down his neutrals while you're right clicking him. We're on a, another good hero with wave clear just because of the Star Storm. Meanwhile, the Venge is going to be the ban coming up from Double Dimension. A good, strong, ranged support hero. Um, a lot of people saying it is better at the carry roll. But, I mean, I don't know. Like, Ten seconds garbage is slightly above absolute dumpster tier. Five um, so that doesn't really say anything for the Vengeful Spirit. If nobody knows, I do not like that hero in the core role. Personal preference, you know, I know there's teams that do run in that core role, they do quite well with it, but I just think... Anyway, getting off topic, that's not... It's already been banned out, we don't need to talk about that. So Timbersaw are going to be the ban from Team Empire. Empire using the bans to take out all these wave clear heroes. Um, again, DD, if you want to make a move for it, the Sven is the great... If you can find a couple of heroes in the kinetic field with the storm hammer over the top for the, the added stun. Just to keep them locked in that kinetic field. 
before the walls actually go up. Now, Dee Dee, what are they going to be picking up in this? Okay, it's going to be the puck once again. Undershock, more than likely, going to be playing that. Yeah, the orb does clear through the creeps. Um, Beastmaster does get those higher tier neutrals, though, when he summons his level 4... I want to say level 4, bar. Might be level 3. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. An empire now. They've got the position four with the spirit breaker, they've got the position three with the beastmaster it seems. Double dimension, they've got themselves the two, the four and the five it looks like, so still waiting to pick up. Oh that's a good one. Great spells to be stolen, the borrow strike, the epicenter, the kinetic field, orb, our dream call could be a big one as well. So Rubik, great pick up. It adds to the magic damage as well with that null field. You usually see players put it on the offensive instead of the defensive setting. So DD. Got themselves the 2, 4 and the 5. Looking for the 3 and the 1. And again, I wouldn't be surprised just to see something like the Sven picked up now. Maybe even a Luna. Um, just for that wave clear potential that both heroes offer. Could go all out fight, pick something like the Chaos Knight, which we did see before M19 ended the game in 15 minutes. It's going to be the LC. Okay, that's a decent amount of lockdown, but with the Beastmaster's Raw, it does need to be careful when, and the Telekinesis coming out from the Rubik, does need to be careful when LC uses those duels. Remaining. Empire. Five seconds remaining. Need the two and the one. But still, still the alchemist. Still got the sniper for the mid lane. You've got heroes like the leaner as well that can do a little bit of damage if you can get the phase shift baited out. You've got the wraith king. The life steal is still available. Good one on one heroes up against the LC. And LC does offer a decent amount of wave clear as well. Just being able to throw up that Q, um, the arrows and deal with the, the creep stacks. It's going to be the Juggernaut. Which, yeah, decent right click. He's got the Omni Slash as well to jump into the fights. He's got the spin for the magic community. remaining five seconds remaining and I wonder if this is going to be a mid juggernaut or a mid LC um, TA going to be banned out by a double dimension, so they think this is going to be a pause one jug. Meanwhile, Empire. Uh, maybe they just don't want FN running, running rampant on the TA once again. Five seconds remaining. Empire got themselves 36 seconds to think about this last ban and pick. They do have the next pick though. And what's it going to be? Just under a minute. And again, this could be a pause to uh, mid lane juggernaut. Up against the puck. It's not the greatest of matchups, but you know, can be done. LC in the off lane, you got the Sanking and Disruptor in the 4 5. Team Empire looking for the Juggernaut. 
Is it going to be a mid? Or is this just going to be the safe lane carry? Like I say, they got the Rubik and the Spirit Break in the position 5 and 4. Beastmaster in the off. An Empire. It's going to be a... Okay, they need a little bit more time. It's going to be a... It's going to be a DK. Oh boy. DK, one of the tankier heroes in the game. He gets one of the best talents, in my personal opinion. Um, when he gets the double the dragon blood, which doubles his health regen and armor on that talent. And now DD just have over a minute to respond. Now the push from the DK is not that bad as well with the Breathe Fire year. You follow that up with the Beastmaster's army. Uh, the Juggernaut spin as well. The, the, the lane clear is, you know, it's decently effective from Team Empire. They've got the push from the DK as well in that dragon form. The fight potential coming out from the Spirit Breaker, the Juggernaut, the Dragon Knight, the Control coming out from the Rubik and the Beastmaster, the Spirit Breaker. So there is a good mix of um, team fight as well as push in the side of Team Empire. But again, Double Dimension don't have it too bad either. The Disruptor for the catch, the Glimpse back, Sand King for the Burrow Strike Control, the Epicenter slow. Puck with the Dream Coil and it's going to be a Sniper. Undershock picking that up, so it looks like it's going to be... Is this going to be a solo safe lane... Puck... With Rajik's playing it, Flow in the off lane with... The Disruptor and the Sand King, maybe going for an aggressive try. Undershock in the mid lane on the Sniper. Or is it going to be Undershock on that position one Sniper and they swap the rolls around and leave the Puck in the mid lane? Anyway, on the set of Empire, we've got Maposhka on the Spirit Breaker. It's going to be Ghost on the Beastmaster, Vance Core on the Rubik. We've got Silent on the Juggernaut and FN playing the Dragon Knight. Just going to wait for the bonus time to wear off. For this draft, I don't think we have a pause. No, just waiting for everybody to pick up for the reserve time, the strat time to be over. Hopefully, we've not crashed out. Yeah, there we go. So, we have the lineups, we have the teams, we have the smokes. If both teams want to be going for this, the yeah, smokes are available. Ghostic just making his way straight down to this bot lane. And it looks like with the line drawing, it could be this solo safe lane puck. Up against the Beastmaster, not the worst thing in the world, does offer a lot of survivability. Um, you've got the orb, you've got the silence, you can attack from range, you can stay away from the boars. Even remember this time to swap to the right overlay. So, uh, tall corner paces so far. Four heroes down on the side of Empire, Five, uh, four heroes on Double Dimension up in the enemy jungle. So yeah, again, both teams getting aggressive in this early game, looking for the trades, looking to just secure the runes. Goes to come Ragex, gonna meet, is there gonna be any trades? No right clicks traded just yet as Ragex throws one out as Ghostic runs himself away. Now it's important to know to know where these 
Supports are going to roam to disrupt him, moving himself back to the bot lane. Could even run this as a 2 on 2. Um, speaking of top lane, Vansko going to be chasing down Flo. Flo pops a tango straight away. The right click's going to be there. He's got the stout shield, so he's going to be taking a little bit of harass. But the block chance is there as Vansko carries on chasing him through the trees. Actually, if they can get a charge off with the telekinesis, the spin's available for the juggernaut. The right click's coming out onto flow already. He pops another tango. There's going to be the bash. Vance Co. The spin comes out as well. The body block's just waiting, holding that telekinesis. There it is. And Maposhka does pick up that first blood. The Boros Strike comes through from Ekna, but it's not going to be... You know, it's just going to be a little bit of for us. Meanwhile, mid lane, FN level 2 already got one point into the Dragon's Blood. And the chase is on top lane, Silent taking all the right clicks from Flo. Eknot does have that Burrow Strike, it is only level 1 so it's really damn short range, but... Doesn't really matter when you trade the Telekinesis comes out, is there going to be a spin? Burrow Strikes himself away to safety, puts Flo in a little bit of trouble as well, Eknot. Got the TP if he needs to, but there's going to be the trade from the Linja Commander using the one point into the overwhelming odds now. And Maposhka gets pretty low, pops the salve. And it looks like it's going to be trade central upon this top lane. Flow. Taking a bit of for us, there's going to be the Butter Strike onto Maposhka, and it's actually going to be the heck now that picks up that rune. Meanwhile, mid lane, Undershock trying to chase down FN, the right clicks are going to be there. For the harass onto FN, but Shrapnel level 2, he's not using it just yet, just as I say that, yeah. FN stuck inside the Shrapnel, the right clicks are going to be there, but Undershock doesn't have enough damage to completely finish off the Dragon Knight. The TP ghost it pretty low. The TP's coming in from Mposhka. They're looking for the chase onto the disruptor. Right clicks out. They're gonna be able to find this with the thunder strike. It might just be enough. Ghostic trying to show it. The axes fly out, and there's gonna be the phase shift. But they do take down the disruptor. Mposhka rage does he have enough for an orb? Doesn't even need it. Just gets the right click off, and even picks up the bow just to rub it in. New what top lane, Vance goes there, he's got one point in the Fable, the charge comes through, there's going to be the Boros Strike and Silent, can't catch up with this charge. Just keep an eye because Ekna is being charged from across the map, Flow tries to heal himself up, the spin comes through. Yeah, Maposhka cancels it, knows he's a little bit too deep under that T1 tower, especially... With Eknot having... Oh, he didn't have enough mana for the stun. But I don't know if Maposhka knew that. Meanwhile, Radiant Jungle. Ghost getting Thunderstruck. And Disruptor holding the point for the Kinetic Field glimpse. Wouldn't have been that much use there. As on the Shock, there's going to be some... Harass with the shrapnel, two points into that. Now, actually, going for two points into the headshot as well. Meanwhile, Maposhka. Gonna be chased down by Flo and Ekna. Is there gonna be a Boros Strike? It was there, but again, it's only level one. But Vanska might not be so lucky. May try and deny himself to the creeps. The Boros Strike comes through and it's gonna secure the kill. Now silent. The neutral creeps are gonna be there. Is there gonna be a slam from the center? Ekna getting pretty darn low. No mana for the Boros Strike. The heal comes out and Maposhka does take down Undershock. In the mid lane. Flo being charged now as well. Body blocks. Is there a telekinesis? It is there. The charge comes through. It's going to be a first hit bash as well. The telekinesis drags him back. Maposhka. Flo gets the heal. So, top lane. 
Act not. Trying to do what he can just to force Silent back, but Silent with the healing mod, even though he's not got enough mana to really spin or contest up against Flow, it just keeps him in range of the XP. Bot lane, it's actually going to be Rage it's taking the 41 to 8 last hits. Mid lane, the charge comes out. FN pops the dragon form now as well. He's got the. <laughs> he's going to be glimpsed back just as he gets the breathe fire off. So Maposhka does take that kill. Vansko, Undershock, moves himself back. As the charge once again coming onto the LC. LC moving himself back. He's not got enough mana for the heals. But he's so darn tanky. So darn tanky. Radiant structures are fortified. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Under shock. It's gonna be another charge into the mid. The Dragonite doesn't have the stun yet, but with the Burrow Strike, it actually cancels the stun. The charge from Maposhka. Undershock, they may try and turn this around with all four heroes, five heroes moving into the mid lane. Flow one with level four, so no deal just yet. But it's going to be Dream Call. Undershock finishes off Maposhka with the Assassinate Vansko. Getting low, finished off by Flow. So it's four to four. Seven minutes into the game. Flow making a move onto Silent. The charge is actually coming through onto a range creep. Eknart's there. He's got two points into the Borrow Strike. Vansko, two points into the Fable. He's got one point into the Null Field as well, which he's using defensively. And now, Rajik's spot lane going towards the Blink Dagger. About halfway there. No big deal. Ghostic moves himself towards Undershock. Undershock's there with the right clicks. He's got the assassinate if they want to try and make a move of this as well. Disruptor moving himself down to help support his sniper. But it looks like they don't want to make a go. Ghostic behind. He's got the level 6. He's got the raw if they want to try and make a move with this. Go to the level 5 of the LC, the Hawk, gonna be spotting this out. Let's take a look at the vision. The charge comes through onto Undershock. Undershock gonna be rolled up as well. There comes the axes. Flo trying to do whatever he can. There's gonna be the stun coming through from the telekinesis. Ghostic trying to run himself away. The assassinates there to secure the kill if needed. Undershock point blank snipe comes out to secure the kill onto Ghostic. So the roll was used. Didi turn it around. Silent level 7, he's got the Omni Slash. <laughs> Bot lane though, did Maposhka just use a charge? It looks like he might have done. So, Courier trying to get out with the items. I don't actually know where it was going around there. But mid lane, Eknat level 4. He's got two points in the Boris right now, so he's starting to get a wee bit of range on that. Going to be spotted out by Maposhka, and they both just go the separate ways. Not wanting to get involved. Flow level 6 does have the duel now if he wants to start getting aggressive around the map. And with heroes like the Sniper the Sand King as well as the Puck are going to be able to throw a decent amount of damage to help him with the duel. Three heroes on the side of Empire stacking up. Beastmaster has this level 4 now, so going to be able to bring the neutrals. There's going to be a dream call, but the charge comes in. There's going to be the roar from Maposhka, um, from Ghostic as well as Maposhka charging in. And Akna doesn't think he's going to be able to get himself away as FN picks up the kill with the DD, the Dragon's Breath. 
The TP Maposhka has a charge, cancels it, the Hawk MVP. And now the first hit bash as well, the stun comes up from the Dragon Knight, the clap. And FN picks it up. So, not even halfway through the Dragon form, this push with the Beastmaster as well as FN on the Dragon Knight. She'll be able to clear through this tier 1 tower pretty quickly. LC TP's in, but FN doesn't care. And now as the shrapnel comes out, this could be the first duel of the game. It is going to go. The assassinate comes out for the bonus damage as well as that borrow strike in the orb. Rajik secures the kill. And LC, well on a way to becoming a scurry, scurry hero. One duel, one win. And if we take a look at the net worth, the <laughs> the Juggernaut that's not really left the top lane is sitting the top, closely followed by the Dragon Knight. So it's six to seven. The glimpse onto FN drags him back down to. It actually drags him to the fountain, just in range of that glimpse. And Undershock, <gasps> Vansko stole the glimpse, I didn't even realise he was level 6, glimpses back the sniper just as he was going to go for the assassinate, that would have been the kill. Oh, and mid lane, Silent comes in, doesn't even need to use the Omni Slash, just right clicks down the Disruptor. So it's 6 to 8, 12 minutes in, the charge is coming on to Wagner, there's going to be a sandstorm. Charge comes in and silent should just be able to Omni Slash after that does commit it. The Borrow Strike though, Earn, not going to take him all the way down. Is he going to try and turn this around? The heal comes up from the LC. Flo trying to chase, looking maybe for a second duel as the Assassinate comes through. It's going to be Rajix picking up the kill onto the Juggernaut and Maposhka. Just enough mana for the duel if you can get in range. The charge comes through though. Glimpse, can he see him? Doesn't look like he can get it off as Ghostic does take this tier 1 tower on the bot lane. Charge comes through though, it's going to be the sandstone but it's not going to be enough as Egnot needs to run himself away one more right click. Maposhka picks that up and now the Double glimpse back, so no ground given, but no ground gained, and Disruptor looks like he is going to be taken down. Silent, Omni Slash up in 68, but the Dragon Knight's there with the Dragon Form. If you can get that tail off, the scene, the charge comes through. Is there going to be a stun from FN that does already have the armlet? There's going to be a shrapnel comes through, but this looks like with the Boros Strike, is there an epicenter available? So, Sand King stunned up, no epicenter just yet. The duel comes out onto Maposhka. The spin over the top from the Juggernaut, this could be a loss going the way of Flo. No, duel runs out just before Flo gets taken down by Silent. And now with the Dream Call, the Assassinate, but with the Armlet Toggle, FN may survive through this. Actually taking down Rajix as well, the Raw comes out onto the Sniper Empire, just making a go for DD's heroes. The Burrow Strike comes through. And now the army from Ghostic, he is Chen Light, got himself the Necrobook, level 2 I do believe. No, just a level one. Boris Strike gonna be a bit short, doesn't cancel the TP of Ghost Dick. So 7 to 15. Empire have more than a kill a minute. 6k net worth lead. They've got a tier 1 tower in the mid, a tier 1 tower on the top, and a tier 1 tower on the bot. As far as items goes, Ghostic now does have that level 2 Necro book. Just walking towards the ne level 3. Ekna, 3 points into the Borough Strike. Flo, only the 10 dual damage. Did fail the duel against Maposhka. It didn't go either way. Ah, uh, mid lane, Undershock, you gotta waddle yourself away from that, I don't think he's gonna be able to get himself out in time, the spin, not even needed from Silent, does commit it in the very end. Dyer's 
So DD putting pressure onto this T1 tower, but Ghostic he's there with his creeps. And the trolls with the skeletons. Not even popping the Necrobook just yet. The rest of Empire moving over. Is there gonna be a defense from DD? So the T2 tower being pressured by Empire. FN TPing back to defend the tier 2 tower top and it is going to be enough with the Rubik's there. The charge comes through onto the LC. LC needs to be careful. There's going to be a glimpse back but not before the stun comes through from the Dragon Knight. Flow now chasing down Maposhka. They may even be able to get a duel from this. The Boros Strike, is it going to be there? It might not even be needed. Yep, just used to finish off the kill. But DK uses his time to catch up. Gets the stun onto Ragex. With the Fable, the Telekinesis, the right click, FN cleans this one up. Meanwhile, tier 3 goes down, the Raw, the Axis. That's 16 minutes in. Radiant's bottom shrine is under attack. Radiance middle tower has fallen. So disruptor. Radiance bottom shrine has fallen. It's gonna be moving up solo smoked as bait, I guess. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, LC. Good enough for the blink and about 50 gold. And can start looking maybe to get the solo pickoffs, but the thing is, Empire. They, they're not going solo anymore. They're going for the five man pushes. They're going for the team fights 8 to 17. And I'm not sure what DD want to do against this. The charge coming in onto Eknot. Sound comes in just to clean up the creep waves. And it looks like Eknot could be able to get himself away before the charge comes in. But it's going to be hitting onto Ragex. So the chase is going to be there at least. Maposhka thinks better of it. Both of them playing silly buggers around the trees. A gift from the Tempest of Battle. Yeah, Beastmaster has got himself the level 3 Necro. Building towards the Solar Crest now as well. And it looks like Beastmaster drawing the battle lines. Just wants to be making a push to the, the racks. On the bot lane, Eknot sees FN. Is there going to be any follow-up? There is a puck nearby. There's going to be the Boros Strike. The epicenter, Ragex blinks in the orb as well. But just look at the regen as well as that armor toggle. Not going to be enough in the end. Still needs that double regen and armor. But the charge comes through Maposhka looking for a kill onto the Sand King. There's even going to be the Spirit Vessel. Sorry, I always forget the name of that. It's new. Still adapting. But Ekna is going to be able to get himself away. One more right click from Maposhka with a bash. Should be enough. The silence comes out. Ekna using himself as bait. But Fansko, if he gets himself a Fable, Roshan taken down by Silent. In the meantime, Fansko are on the chase. One Fable. That's all he's going to need. He walks up, sees him, and walks past. So Ghostic not opting for the blink, going for this pushy build, the fighty build. Silent's got himself an Aegis. Meanwhile the items on the side of the Radiant as everybody on the side of Empire does shrine up looking for this fight. So LC, got himself the Soul Ring, Power Treads, Blink Dagger, Ragex, building towards the Yules. Eggnut actually has his Blink Dagger, yeah that's, that's pretty good. Um, 20 minutes in for a Sun King. Sniper, Dragonlance, Maelstrom. Illusion. 
Mr. Wagner. Leading the line, there's going to be the Dragon Knight. Both heroes blink away from each other. The charge coming through with the telekinesis though. Rajix, is he going to be able to get himself away from this? The silence comes out. There's going to be an instant duel won by the LC. So it's 34 damage. And now, with the root being taken down, the Yule Scepter coming out. The roar comes through onto the puck. Right clicks goes to Kizzy. going to be able to finish off the puck. One more right click may have been enough. Silent takes down Undershock. Flow being chased down by the DK on the back lines. Epicenter comes through. Takes down Ghost Stick. But Silent still chasing Omni Slash. Not available, but Ekna. May not even use it. The blink comes up. There's going to be the stun from the DK, the fire breath, the right clicks from Silent. Four heroes down on the side of DD. <laughs> and it only recaps the last little bit of the fight. Standard Dota recaps. Buybacks available for the LC as well as the SK, but I don't think that's something they want to be doing. They'll just wait it out the 15, 14 seconds. Fortification is there. The range taking a little bit of harass. The Yule Scepter comes out onto the Juggernaut, though. Pops the Manta style to help him clean up this range. Rax fans go sitting behind. There's going to be the sounds from Ragex. Ragex orbs himself away. Silent gets to spin just as the Burrow Strike comes through. Takes down the range and moves himself away. There's going to be the Dream Call, though. Juggernaut getting pretty low. The Assassinate doesn't have the Manta style to dodge this. But blinks just at the right time. And now they may even try and turn this around. It's Vanscore. Oh, Vanscore. Giving away a free duel to flow. Thirteen to twenty-one. Twenty-two minutes into the game. Twelve. Twelve K net worth lead to Empire. But DD. They may have lost one range rack. Still hanging on though. Empire, the charge comes in onto Sniper. There's going to be a roar available if they want to go for it, but the axes look like it's just going to be enough. The Disruptor, Rage is coming in from behind the Yule Scepter onto the Beastmaster. There's going to be the Stack of Stone, but the Connect Field not up in time. Glimpses him back into it, but the Stack of Stone is pretty much already over as the roar comes out onto the Disruptor now. It's going to be a kill going the way of Ghostic. Rage is going to be able to get himself away. Mapashka looking for the run, but the blinking from Silent. Silent gets the Omni Slash onto Flow, and it is going to be enough to take him down. Again, four heroes fall on the side of DD. <laughs> Fang just gives it the stun now. And this time, no buybacks. Flow gives it the GG. But Maposhka wants to kill before the game ends. Is he going to be able to get it? Nope. So it's going to be Empire taking the series against DD 2 to 0. It's going to be the last game of the day for me up in the CIS region. It is back tomorrow if we take a look at the schedule. It's going to be Group A. What are we? The 21st or the 22nd. So Group A is going to be Team Spirit versus the winner of Spartak versus H. FZ, which I might not have been updated just yet. It might not be over just yet. And then it'll be M19 versus Double Dimension at 1700, uh, 1900 CET. So 7 o'clock CET is going to be the M19 versus Double Dimension match in Group B. Um, and Team Spirit face off against the winner of Spartak versus HFC at uh, 4 o'clock CET. But that's all for me today. I've been Rob and Roll. Um, I hope you enjoyed the cast. If you want to follow me on Twitch or Twitter, it's at Rob and Roll Gaming. If you're watching on the stream, it's up in the top right, uh, the Twitter at least, and you just adapt that for Twitch. But for now, I'm going to call it a night. I hope you've enjoyed the cast, and I will see you next time I'm on. Have a good day, evening, afternoon, wherever you are. Um, but for now, I'm going to sign off.